guest tonight is one of uh, America's greatest literary minds. He's a best-selling author. His latest book, uh, Squirrel Seeks Chipmunk, is in now in paperback, which is a softer version of a hardback book. <laughs> <laughs> I know all about literature, everybody. Why, what a lovely vagina, Your Majesty. <laughs> oh, no, wait, that would be the Queen talking, because that was her voice. <laughs> So she was saying, do you like my vagina? <laughs> Why, your majesty, it's one of the finest I've seen in all my travels. <laughs> Please welcome David Sedaris, everybody. David Sedaris. Very nice to, to have you on the show. I'm a huge fan of your work. I'm delighted that you're here. I'm a little nervous, but I'm all right. You're, you're nervous? I am a little nervous to meet you because you, your mind is, is, uh, is the kind of mind that I, uh, that I, that I enjoy. And I, I seek your approval in a way that I don't normally care about anyone else. But in person, in my mind is nothing special. Like if I have some paper in a couple months, but I'm not like television or... I'm not... Uh, this is not, not really right. like television either. <laughs> right? Although I, I do like your giant buttons. You know, I got this shirt in Japan and I thought, I thought that I was going to get so many compliments on it, but I think people think that I have arthritis or there's something. <laughs> and then what I did was I had snaps. Have you noticed that the buttons on men's shirts have gotten further apart? It used to be they were like that far apart, but now... Like you can fit your whole hand in between the buttons. I thought my hands were getting smaller. I well, thought that's what I was, it was. I have small hands. So what I did was I had snaps put. In between. Because otherwise I'd bend over and the whole conversation would be about oh, my yeah, washboard yeah. stomach. Yeah, okay. That's like, all we'd be talking about. A lovely about. vagina, Your Majesty. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but I uh, thought, no, and no, one, no one talks about it. No one talks about your buttons? My super buttons. No. What about the, 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 this is a very attractive little thing here. Is you know, it is so funny how much you can get, a guy can get, by putting a little handkerchief in his pocket. You know, you it does make that? a difference. I wish I would do it, but I don't have the that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me about, tell me, I've, I've read some of the stories in, in Squirrel Seeks Chipmunk. They're delightful. They're absolutely delightful, and I enjoy them very much, but some of the animals in here behave like humans. Uh, <laughs> indeed. Um. I don't know if that was your intention at all, that... In any, was it some kind of, you know, metaphor or parable or, or a literary device? Well, I, you know, I was going to call it a collection of fables, but fables have morals and I don't always. Sometimes I do. <laughs> Sometimes I do, but then the others are just, some of them were just based on things that happen in real life and it just sort of turned the people into animals. There's a certain whimsy attached to it, I think, when you have squirrels talking about their date in life rather than actual... Yeah. Well, I, I wrote that story for a radio program, uh, and they did the the theme of the show was doomed love. But like a squirrel and a chipmunk, you know, like when you're young, you think I'm going to breed a squirrel with a chipmunk, and make and no one's thought about this. No one's, you know, like you think no one ever thought about it before you. So you're going to put a squirrel and a chipmunk in a cage together, and you're going to breed like a squirrel with a chipmunk's tail, and you'll be a famous scientist. But. So the theme That's not all it takes, you know. You don't just I know you it. don't get a Nobel Prize for just putting two defenseless creatures no, in a cage and say, "Okay, go ahead." Uh oh. You know it doesn't work. Okay, but, but why can like let's say a Doberman Pinscher and a Beagle mate, but they not can? a squirrel and a chipmunk? Well, I think because they're a different uh, species. I'm not a scientist. They, you know, I'm a vulgar lounge right, entertainer. Right, they're different species, but, but, they, but, it, but they, they're about the same size, and they're both cute. <laughs> you know, doesn't it seem like they Seems reasonable be able to me, to? yeah. I, I can't imagine why you haven't become a famous scientist. I, <laughs> do you have pets? Do you keep... No. Nope. We, we have a bird. We have a bird. That's a pet. No, but it doesn't... It lives outside, but it, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, wait, wait. No, we... Wait, that, that's just... Just because uh, you've seen a bird outside, no. it doesn't mean it's your bird, you know. Oh, that's my bird over there. No. Um, I, I live in London. We live in London. Right, right. We have a little garden in the back. Right. And there's a robin, and it comes into the house. It doesn't fly. It walks into the house. Right. It walks into the kitchen. Does not. And it would be a nightmare if it flew in the kitchen and yeah. it got caught up in there. Never does that. It just walks in there, and it says, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? That's all. It never goes in the living room. And we feed it, but it's not about the food. He's like, oh, okay, I'll take some. But he doesn't... 
that's not the reason why he's there. And it's even better. You know how like, good you feel when you think nature likes you? Yes, you know I mean? yes, yes. I mean, it's different than having a dog like you, but if you think nature likes you, if you think nature chose you... Well, you think a tiny bird represents the entire spectrum of nature, the entire scope of all wild animals? One, one cockney flying rat walks into your house and suddenly you're... Who's that person that nature but, liked? Mother Nature, yes. But I don't want, I was, we were going to get a cat, but if we get a cat, then it might... No, you can't have a cat if you've got a bird. Get rid of the bird, the, so. Yeah, no. But it's perfect. It's a perfect arrangement. Which part of London do you live in? Kensington. I know that, Robin. <laughs> Kensington's very nice, a very nice part of London. I used to live in North London. In where? Islington. Oh, uh huh. Islington's lots of, very nice too. Lots of lots of places end in Ington in England. I've noticed. <laughs> but Islington. I thought you lived in France. I always thought you lived in. Didn't you live in I Paris for a while? I used to, but then I started going to London a lot to do things for the BBC, and I liked it. And BBC's nice, isn't it? They're they're very pleasant. You know. Good evening. Welcome to the BBC. <laughs> now, Her Majesty the Queen discusses her vagina. <laughs> well, they had. Uh, I like that. Uh, Sorry, but I haven't a clue. Oh, that's a great show. show. That radio show? Yeah, I love and, all that. And they had, uh, a they had a line on there. One in three Americans weighs as much as the other two. <laughs> <laughs> the and then they did a category. <laughs> oh, they're such smug bastards, aren't they? Uh, that's very funny, though. But they did a category. They said uh, movie titles that would be greatly changed with the removal of one letter. Right. And the guy said, think... The Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Yo, it, that's so rude. So you get, and yet, how are you going to beat that, Junior? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you just did a very clever thing. You said a terrible word on TV and didn't say it. Well, that, that's what they did on the radio. But you can say that word on the radio there, so I yes. don't know why they bothered covering it up. Because it's more fun to cover it up. I think censorship in, on television is more fun to have than to not have. Like, here, if you could actually hear me cussing, you'd be outraged. You know, but... <laughs> but the little flags and stuff, it's adorable. You know, if I say... Ooh la la! Ooh la la! Uh, you know, it's, it sounds terrible, but when it goes on the air, it'll be like... Ooh la la, cheeky monkey! And, uh, so it's a lot less threatening, I think. Anyway, so the book's on paperback now. You know that's a soft version of the hardback. I wondered, I wondered, because it goes like that. Yeah. And the other one didn't. Yeah, that's, that's the paper right there. That's a different <laughs> consistency. Now, I, uh, I, I, I read a lot of, uh, of uh, books, you know, and I've read all of... I think I've read everything you've done. I'm fascinated by your, uh, your attraction to taxidermy. Which I think is such an odd... Uh, I don't mean to judge you in any way, but... It, uh, well, maybe just a little bit. The, the, the idea that, that you would collect stuffed dead creatures. You know, really? my present skeleton permitting, I don't really uh, hang around dead things. Because I... I uh, that's the last thing I bought, and it was... Uh, uh, I thought about the skeleton because it was a, a head... I was in London at the flea market, and it's a box, a wooden box, and it had a sticker from the Edinburgh College of Physicians on the side of it. And I opened it up, and it was a padded box, like a, like a coffin, but a box, and inside was a woman's head. I mean, a skeletal head. A ske skeleton's head? Right. How would you know it was a woman? Beautifully done. The, on the size Earrings? of it. The, the size of it. And the... All right. <laughs> Because that doesn't mean a thing in Edinburgh, let me tell you that. They told me it, they told me it was a woman. Right, okay. Um, but, but it was little golden clasps, so you can remove the, the crown, and just, just a beautiful little thing. But the guy said, you know, it's in a box, because that way, you don't want to be the guy who's like, hey, I have a head. <laughs> he said, sometimes you want to be discreet. And it's like, that's it exactly. I feel I've been put in my um, place there, I know. I, I just think uh, taxidermy is the, the perfect sculpture. I mean, if you get an, if you get something that was well done, mm -hmm. then I, I, I just don't see how it gets any better than that. Well, I, I find there's a big taxidermy store in Paris. I'm sure you've been in it. That mm -hmm. when you go up the stairs and mm -hmm. there's all these very De Roll. what's it called? De Roll. De Roll, right? And uh, the, it's uh, I found it a little unnerving to be around all these animals. Not well, that's like an arc of taxidermy. Like they have an elephant, a baby elephant, yeah, yeah, and they yeah. have. Uh, 
I mean, I don't know where they get that stuff, but they've got, it's, it's an arc, basically. But I went to a place in London, and it's only open by appointment, because I think a lot of, it's in Islington, I, I think right. a lot of uh, animal rights people were upset about it. But I went in, and I was looking for an owl, right? It's against the law to buy an owl in the United States, and it's against the law to buy one in France. Right. But in England... Owls you still have free yeah, owl trading? You can get an owl. Right. <laughs> but That's because of Harry Potter, I think. <laughs> and they had kittens, and they, they had, a good, they had a, good, uh, a good range of things. But I went in, and, and it was like the guy who worked there could see into my soul. And he said, I've got something you might like. And he made sure the door was locked, and he brought out a human arm. And it was in the back. It was in the back, and it was on a platter with a glass dome over it, and it had a tattoo on it. And you know, when you see an arm and it has a tattoo, you automatically think concentration camp. But it was a. Oh no 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 no! Come on. <laughs> yeah. And he, the guy said that his father got into a fight at a bar and cut this guy's arm off with a cleaver. But who carries a cleaver <laughs> into a? We're out of time. Do you want to uh, do you want to go for the big cash prize? It's a kind of a TV thing. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, what time is it, Shadow Stevens? It's time for the big cash prize. It's very simple. All you have to do. Um, you, uh, you have to answer one question correctly. You can win these uh, fifty single American dollars. You buy yourself uh, something nice, dead and stuffed. Fantastic. All right. You ready? Mm -hmm. Iceland is in the North Atlantic. Its capital city is Reykjavik. True or false? Joseph Stalin once studied to be a priest. False. Close. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you one more shot at it. You were, you're so close, I think you should get another round. I really want that money. Yeah, well, you're go, you're go, I think you're going to win it. You're so close. Joseph Stalin once studied to be a priest. True. Yeah!